Finally, an answer to the age-old question, which comes first, the chicken or the egg roll? Easy. Just eat whichever one's closest. The Sensation Salad and Filet Sandwich Meal are back at Zaxby's. Both feature our famous hand-breaded chicken, crispy wontons, Asian slaw, and citrus vinaigrette. And each comes with its very own egg roll. For a limited time, only at Zaxby's. Order ahead, drive through or get it delivered. From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. To wake up, wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! What's up, everybody? It's Wake Up Warchant, proudly presented by Zaxby's Indescribably Good. You already know the people who do this show and who we work for. If you're not a member of the Ultimate Semble Sports Source, that promo expires August 15th. That promo being Norvell 2020. 25% off an annual membership to Warchant.com. An additional three free months tacked on top of that and a $25 e-card to Garnet and Gold. Maybe that's the word that guy, what was his name, Todd? Todd didn't like the way I pronounce things. Maybe when I say and, like that, that mm. added emphasis maybe, Corey. It could be a lot of things that you say really though, right? I guess. I mean, theoretically. Theoretically it could be. But, hey, man, we haven't been together for a few days, and while uh, that was going on, uh, football broke out. Florida State's practicing and stuff. That's pretty cool. Um, before we jump to that, though, do you want to talk about what's going on in the uh, the world of college athletics? I don't I don't think I'm going to opine much on it, but I, I think it would almost be derelict if we didn't mention it. Um, or you can punt. It's fine. You can, you can trot out Alex Mastromano out there and punt if you want, Corey. Uh, yeah, man, it's just like – Every story I've written, and you know I wrote a bunch this weekend, Haslan. I was firing on all cylinders. You were, man. Starting on Friday, um, a bunch, you know, for me. Um, uh, I, I, I can't get anybody to explain to me how it's safer for college kids not to play football, but to go to class and go to campus. It just makes no sense to me. Um, but I just – I the, the way – the way Twitter is is rolling with all these anonymous sources from the Big Ten, they're gonna they're gonna be the first ones to announce they're either canceling it or postponing it, and then because most administrators are going, the, the other conferences are gonna follow suit. It's just how it's gonna work. It's it just it's we know what's gonna happen. It's the, the, it'll be the Big Ten first, and then the Pac-12, and then the SEC and the ACC and the Big Twelve are gonna look like pariahs. By oh, do they not care about the well-being of their college athletes? They're gonna go ahead with a college football season. When the, the Big Ten showed how much they care about the safety of their athletes, yeah, sure they did. Uh, no, they didn't. It's just it, they can't prove – I mean, anyway, I don't even want to get into that. But it saddens me to no end that this started in February, middle of February. By March, it was a significant problem in this country. We're in the middle of August, and not one thing has changed about college football. Uh, not one thing has changed. Nothing was really – I mean, they made some uh, adjustments – Sure, and they made these conference-only schedules, but there was never any thought to, okay, what's going to happen when the kids come back to school? It's just like, I don't know if they thought it was going to go. Because what, what's changed, Aslan, between today, as we're talking right now, and four days ago? Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, it's a very right? good question. They haven't even there hasn't been a, an outbreak. There hasn't been uh, a spike on these campuses with these, these student athletes. The testing, I, yeah, I, I, don't quite, uh, I don't quite grasp it. Yeah, but that's it's bureaucrats. It's bureaucracy. They they don't want to, uh, you know. And I and I'm not being callous with people's lives. If if I thought for I th there was a great a, a great tweet by an athlete, and I, I can't even remember where he was from, where he said, "Look, if it could be proven that football uh, would give me COVID or make me much more risk, much more at risk to get COVID, I would stop playing tomorrow. We all would. But you can't prove that. You can't prove that." And number one, if we stop playing football and you send us back out into the regular population, it's there too. And, you know, I know Trevor Lawrence was on Twitter Sunday, uh, Sunday night talking about uh, uh, starting like a we want to play movement. And right. there were college football players from around the country tweeting that, letting people know that, yes, they do want to play this season. Um, but I just I, I think that the, the, the power brokers, the powers that be aren't going to risk it. Um, I'm not saying I don't blame them. I wish they could have had some sort of foresight in the last five months to come up with a feasible plan other than let's hope that there's no outbreak on our campus, but they haven't. 
and it really bums me out. I should say I shouldn't say it. I mean, I'm not 100% sure this thing is going to get canceled. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, folks. I, I'm not that guy. You know me. You listen to this show. You've been it's kind just, of a Debbie Downer, though. I, well, right now, yeah, because the last two days on Twitter, it's just been nonstop. And on social media, it's been nonstop. And all these anonymous sources saying there's no way it can go on. And I don't think these people are making up their sources. They're talking to people that matter. And they're laying the groundwork so people won't be blindsided when the Big Ten decides to cancel the season. And when the Big Ten decides to cancel the season, that will be the first domino. And because it's college athletics and there's no real commissioner, there's no real point person, they all follow the leader. They're all going to follow the Big Ten right back in, right into bankruptcy and say, well, the Big Ten's not going to do it. We don't want to look bad either, so we're going to cancel our football season too, which would be great if you were sending them back into a bubble where they were safer. But in many instances, you're sending them to a bubble where they're not, they're, you're not, there's no bubble out there, and they, they're not going to be any safer. Um, but that's definitely what's going to happen. That's, I, 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 th I, I think that's the reality. I'm hoping, hoping that they just delay it. I think what the, the one smart thing that I think all these conferences did was give themselves some wiggle room. So you can say, all right, we're going to push it back a month. There's, I mean, really, there's no reason you can't play. I mean, I know the Big Ten doesn't want this, but you could start playing in the middle of October and play through December. You know, there's no rule that says you can't do that. But I guess it know. goes back to your point of what's changed in the last four days or what's changed. Other than the MAC, The MAC canceled their football season, and it's just ridiculous that the MAC would be that domino that's all of a sudden the Big Ten's like, well, Lord, if, if Northern Illinois is not playing, what are we doing here? Yeah. If a big uh, powerhouse like Northern Illinois, the Jordan Lynch, uh, the great Jordan Lynch played for them, if they're not going to deem it necessary to play football, then why would Ohio State? Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, anyway, I, you can hear it in my voice. I apologize, folks. We'll talk about more fun stuff. But just know that as I say everything I'm going to say over the next 40 minutes, I think we're all really, really wondering, okay, when, is this, when does the plug get pulled? I, and you know I hope it doesn't. I'm, I, I'm not one of those people that is, I'm told you so. Look, this is too, you, you can hear my, you hear my words. You hear what I'm saying. You, you've heard me for the last five months. I want college football. Um, I think college football could be played. The, the, the guidelines that are in place right now as far as what happens on campus, it just right now seems almost unfeasible. But I'd like to get a shot. You know, we could have the kids come back to campus and see what happens. I, I can't fathom why you would cancel it on, what, the second week in August? Right. When, like you said, there's been no outbreak. Yeah. There's no football team that all of a sudden has 40 kids sick and six of their grandparents are in the hospital. None of that has happened. Um, well, not that we know anyway. So what's the rush? Why are they doing this? And, man, I, I you know... I get safety is paramount. It's a priority. Understand that. Anything I say from here on out, I've qualified it. Safety is the most important thing. Um, that said, I don't know how football players are safer in their dorms or at parties or back home. It may be not the best environments. When it may be not the biggest houses with more, more than one person in that house, sharing a house, not knowing where that person goes and has to work. Um, and is it, who's exposed? but no testing if they're back home. Uh, but if you even keep them on campus, which I guess you could can I mean, when you cancel the season, do you keep the kids on campus? Yeah, they're not going to, they're not, they don't get evicted, man. They're still students. They still got to go to class. They're still what gonna be possible sense does it make then? What, what makes going to chemistry class safer than, than being outside playing football? If you're actually in a classroom, if you're actually indoors, because I just you're masked and you're probably six feet away from your classmates. Yeah, but I mean, they're well. hey, they're wearing face shields, right? Where are the face shields in the locker room? All right, we're uh, in the meeting room. I was going to give you six minutes. We're we're at nine minutes. Let's Sorry. put all this in a nice tidy box in your sister's attic and move on. <laughs> if you guys don't follow Corey on Twitter, did you ever figure out somebody bolted a box that looks like a ballot box? Because there's like a slit in it, bolted it to the floor of his sister's attic, and it was a mystery. Yeah, it's bolted to the floor. It also was padlocked when they got in. It's padlocked and bolted to the floor, and it has a little slit in it that, like you said, you, it looks like you could stuff envelopes in. And it's about one foot by two feet. Um, so not a tiny box, but not a huge box either. It's in the box. And when they finally cracked it open, the only thing that was in there was a rag. 
which is so, totally normal. Right. That's no, I, I said they should just send it off to CSI and see. I mean, that might solve nine murders. <laughs> Um, uh, but, and then, uh, so not only that, but so I, when I tweeted it, there were like five or six people that said they th- said it was a bat box, meaning you open it up. I guess you, you, if you have, ba- if you have a bat problem in your attic, mm-hmm. you open it up, you entice the, the bats with, I don't, I don't know what bats eat cheese, human flesh, apparently whatever they eat, put it, put it in the box. The bat flies into the box and then you shut it and you've trapped the bat, the bat inside. Which I was like, okay, I guess that makes sense, but it's bolted to the floor. So isn't the idea of a bat box to take then that said bat box, once you got a bat in there outside and let the bat go? Right. Very, but very you, salient point. You can't if it's bolted to the floor. Yeah. So we don't know what it was. We don't know if it was a, um, literally no idea. No idea what it, what it could have been. All right, well, here's what we do know. Florida State, three days into preseason camp. They have Monday off. They'll resume practice on Tuesday. That is obviously if uh, things are still rolling along. (laughs) Fingers crossed. We'll try not to operate under that assumption for too much of the show, or maybe everything will be under that sort of cloud. So there's kind of a lot to talk about, Corey. Um, First off, uh, well, you've been been so negative, I can't be negative now because it'll be just too much negativity if I talk about the negative things. Um, but you know, I'm not. Ne- I'm negative about what the, just everything that's happened in the last five or six months that we find not ourselves happy. here. It's fine. Like you can. I'm be really happy bummed. I, I hope people understand that that the, the tone of my voice is just it's sadness, it's frustration, yeah. and it, it, it it's just all of it. It's like I, I golly, we can't have a col- We're not going to have a college football season. And again, I'm crossing my fingers and hoping against hope. I just again, it makes no sense that they just released on Thursday. Wasn't it Thursday? The times of these games? Yeah. yeah. Like the times and the dates and when yeah. the, the dates, when you're going to be yeah, playing yeah. these teams. Yeah, the dates of these games. So on Thursday, it was all full steam ahead, right? <laughs> and then by Saturday, I'm being told the, st- the sport's shutting down with nothing that's happened in between that would make that or make that happen. Yeah. Like there was no uh, okay, okay, catalyst. Cool. Sorry. I'm, sorry. I wish you were sorry. here. I, could hold, I would hold you. I would I'm hold really you. upset, folks. I'm you. really upset. I hope let's, September 12th. If we're in Doak Campbell Stadium watching Florida State play Georgia Tech, I've already said it on Seminole Headlines. Whoop on, I, Georgia Tech. I will be wearing a toupee. Um, <laughs> oh, this, is, I, this is the whole toupee thing. This is where it's, I've, I've yeah, seen tweets yeah. about it, but I don't know the whole backstory. Yeah, so if, if, I mean, I need to do maybe toupee and something else, like a, some sort of like uh, flashy suit or something. Like a monocle. But I, I, How about a monocle? A monocle wouldn't be bad and a pipe. It, with no smoke in it, so I'd be allowed to have it, but like a corn cob pipe or something. But I'm definitely going to have a toupee. Um, I don't know what color of the two the toupee will be yet. Not gray though. Got enough gray in my life, so uh, probably jet black. And uh, I, I don't I don't know how much even what what's a toupee run, Aslan? You would know that, right? That hurts my feelings. All right, before we start Sorry. talking about, I guess what the players and coaches said or didn't say. We're not obviously allowed at practice right now because of the safety protocols that are in place. Florida State has gone ahead and provided limited video coverage of their practice. I think maybe six minutes in all they've uh, provided to the media from uh, Thursday or maybe Friday and Saturday's practice. No, Thursday because Friday – wait, it's Sunday. I can't even think right now. Friday and Sunday. I figured it out. Way to go, Aslan. Uh, Six minutes of footage from Friday and Sunday's practices combined. Uh, were you able to watch a video they posted on Sunday, Corey? Uh, no, I was That's not. Fine. Describe it to me. Mako Dotson uh, is kind of the, the star of that video. Some PBUs, really good in coverage. Uh, Keyshawn Helton, I think somebody, there was a quote about if, if he's not 100%, then, man, we're looking forward to what he's going to look like when he is 100%. And I was that guy that had a lot of skepticism about how much we can expect out of guys like him and Hamsa and Jaden Lars would be after they sustain season injuring or season ending card off injuries. Uh, but man, the, the first video they showed on Friday, he was explosive coming out of his break. He looked really good. And then the Sunday video, there's uh, him and Dotson going heads up and I mean, just really just clean route, uh, beautifully run, but Dotson was all over him and, and, and you know, knocked it away. So, uh, Brian Robinson, the freshman had a very nice, um, uh, completion past Cyrus Fagan. But other than that, the two things that stood out to me were there. I think it's the last clip in Sunday's video. All this can be watched on our YouTube page. Thank you to Florida State for allowing us to upload it to our YouTube page. Uh, the last clip from Sunday's video is Josh Kando looking like 
uh, Von Miller. Uh, it's, oh, it, all right. It just it'll it'll tickle it'll tickle the imagination, and it does appear, and he even said so. So I, I guess I shouldn't even qualify it with appear. Uh, James Blackman has tightened up his throwing motion. I, I think it's quite noticeable. Uh, maybe when we do speak to Norvell on Tuesday, if I can figure out a way to record his press conference and ask a question, uh, I'll just kind of ask him where that came about, if it, if it does make a difference or if it's just sort of a peace of mind thing for them and him. But uh, I, I saw Josh Kane that looked very explosive. Uh, Blackman looked very, uh, very more compact in his throwing motion. And the last thing here, actually, uh, it's one snap. And again, this is kind of crazy that we're probably talking this much about one or two clips. But Devontae Love Taylor held his own against Marvin Wilson in a one on one blocking drill. And I mean, and not like held his own, but I, I don't want to give the win to him because I don't want to upset Marvin if I'm wrong. But man, my amateur eye looks at that clip and I'm like, I think he won that. I think 58 and White won it, uh, who is uh, Devontae Love Taylor. So, um, yeah, man. Uh, and there's just a sound, Corey. There, the, the soundtrack from the practice, it's not music, it's. It's the way it, I, I'm scared. I have like a fearful sort of anxiety because it's it, it's warriors. It's people greater than me, uh, more alpha than me, competing against each other, and it's creating a verve, uh, a palpable sensation in the air uh, that makes me excited for what could it be uh, with this team and this program. Great. I just hope when the Big Ten says they're not doing it, that John Swafford has. You're not you're not relegated to following the Big Ten's lead. You can say, you know what, we've done our due diligence. As for now, we're still we're still on board. Things can change. We understand that, but for now, we're still playing football. The Big Ten's decision has no impact on us at all. They can have fun missing a season or playing in the spring. The boys in the South are going to be playing football. Uh, at, for what you said, Aslan, because I was listening. I, you know, I know you think I was just waiting for you to stop talking. So I can make my point to Where John Swafford. Where would I ever get that assumption from? No, no, I, no. Before. Yeah, I don't know. That's crazy that you would even think that. And I, we both know, everybody knows he listens to this show. Uh, big fan. Um, so I was just giving him some advice. Uh, yeah, man, that kind of stuff right there, you, you start to think, man, there's some pieces. Mm. The way the season sets up and starts, again, you know, this is all caveated. Um, and and, and the, some of the talent they have on that team it really does excite you, and I'm telling you, folks. I guess we haven't really talked since the since the press conference has started. Yeah, we haven't. But but to a man, just the way they talk about Norvell, I, I brought it up in the thing I wrote on Saturday when we talked to the quarterbacks that Jordan Travis said he's learned more about football than he's ever he ever had before, just in these uh, probably last couple months uh, around the coaching staff. Blackman said he's falling in love with the knowledge he's getting, and I don't think that's coach speak. Because if it was, why didn't they say it during the last tenure? We never heard that kind of stuff. Right. I genuinely think, um, and one of the offensive linemen said it too. Uh, maybe it was, a, I can't remember exactly what it was, but he said they taught, oh, it was uh, Baselli. He said they teach philosophies. They don't just teach a play. They teach, here's why we do a play. Here's why, why it should work. And then Blackman was saying the same thing about how um, they, they teach the why, like what yeah. the defense is trying to do. I really like that. That was, that was right. uh, quite eye-opening. It, make, it make it philosophical. Like this is what they're trying to do. This is what they're dead set on taking away from us. Here's how we counter that. This is why they want to take it away from us. Like not just say, hey, if the safety's here, this is what we're running. But give the why. Give it, give it more of a philosophical feel. And just the way these guys talk about how they learn is uh, really, really encouraging. So there you go. I, I turned the tide, Aslan. I'm not, I'm not upset anymore. I'm not depressed. All right, there we go. You shouldn't be, man. We're talking football. We're talking about Florida State football. Uh, the aforementioned article about the quarterbacks that you uh, referenced, because that's why it would be aforementioned, uh, really good piece, I think, by the way. Listen, all these videos, we're putting them up on the YouTube page. Some of you, <sighs> these are Zoom meetings. And we have no control over any of the audio quality. We are providing the quickest, most rapid turnaround and the best possible quality you can get from uh, these players and coaches speaking into an internal microphone in a probably five-year-old laptop. So everybody is an audio engineer. There's literally one guy who was like, hey, man, clearly you guys don't know what you're doing. Uh, let me know if you need help. 
as it's like, oh, so the guy who has no idea how Zoom meetings work and how you have no sort of control over it, you're going to be the guy that fixes it. I had to get that off my chest. Sorry, Corey. You had your Good piece. job, Aslan. I'm glad fine. you did. I'm glad you did. Uh, Can I go are, back to talking about COVID? Uh, give me 30 seconds. So all <laughs> this is on our YouTube page. So all the interviews from all the players, all the coaches, literally every single one uh, is up on our YouTube page for you to check out. Uh, and Corey did a really great job of distilling down sort of the key takeaways from Friday's press conference, which is something we'll probably do moving forward because, again, I don't think – Everybody neither has the time nor inclination to sit and listen to 40 minutes of interviews when they could read something really succinct and, and uh, very sort of uh, to the point from Corey. Uh, but you mentioned something about like, uh, hey, so the first person we spoke to was James Blackman, and then after that was Jordan Travis, followed by Tate Rodemaker, and then Chubba Purdy. Take that for what you will. You trying to say that's a depth chart, Corey? Huh? I said it was chart? the no, but I did say I think it it might have been for the first two days because they just went by seniority and guys that had been there. So it might have been one, two, three, four, just based on experience. That was my um, thinking. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I you know it was the depth chart for the interviews. Uh, but no, I you know I, I thought I thought all four were impressive. Um, yeah. Do you think honestly? So we, uh, Chuba was asked what he ran the forty in because apparently there was yeah. one report that he ran a four four and another one he ran a four six. He said the summer before his senior year he ran a four four two and then a four four four. What do you think about that? Chuba, I love you, man. I'm I'm sold, but like we don't we don't have to, you don't have to. Yeah, and we, we don't we don't we don't need we don't need a fib. I mean, we don't need a fib. If my man's running a four four two, at that size, oh doctor. <laughs> but in reality, you just have to run a. I mean, if he's running a four six, like if he here's what I think though. Nobody eights. would come out. Nobody would come out and say. I run a four, not even an 18 year old that's Mr. All American that everybody's told he's been awesome his whole life. Nobody would come out and say they run a four, four, two, if they're really clocking like a four, seven, eight. Right. You know, so he yeah, must yeah, be yeah. pretty darn fast. Yeah. He might not be four, four, two fast, especially if we're doing like Indianapolis combine, like LaMarcus Joyner ran a four, five. Yeah. Chubba Purdy ain't as fast as LaMarcus Joyner. But if he's saying he, if he feels like he's a four, four, 40 guy, that's good enough for me, baby. That means he's plenty fast. That means he's not being caught from behind a lot. I should, um, so, I should take yeah, it that back. excites me. I, I don't think he's lying. I, I think whoever timed it probably yeah. wasn't accurately uh, right. pressing stop and go. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying that Chubba – I take it back, Chubba. Love you, man. I'm not make, you, you didn't make it up. I think you were given some wrong information. Well, it's just – those are – maybe he, it was a timer on a uh, cell phone. Yeah. Those aren't maybe the, the most uh, accurate – um, but on the, on those stopwatches, but yeah, man, I, I, the fact that he thinks he's a four, four guy and, and Hey man, maybe he was, maybe he is, maybe he's going to get even faster, but that tells you how athletic, how athletic that dude must be. And that's a really good thing, man. That's a really good thing. Um, because Jordan Travis ain't a four, four, two guy. And he, he was plenty athletic enough at the quarterback position. Uh, someone else that we spoke to that looked quite uh, well on the video and again it was six minutes of video we didn't get to see everybody so but they did a pretty good job of at least having like one clip of every single quarterback so they they are being cognizant of that uh, man my guy you know part of me that why i fell in love with robert cooper was just because he's a big old lovable guy he's, I mean, there's a clip of me interviewing him the first day he was at practice i think he was an early enrollee or maybe he wasn't but anyway the first day he was there and i'm like cooper like, how much you weigh and he's like 360 and I think it was Asante Samuel because he also enrolled at the same time. And maybe Isaiah Bolton, they're like, man, 360, more like 390. Like they were just clowning him. Like there's no way you weigh 360 pounds. I think he even did throw out the, the number 390. Yeah, 380 and, or 390 I think is what he yeah, said. Yeah, like he looks svelte. And there's a clip of him going through the, the cones or the pylons with some really violent fast hands. And uh, it's, it's scary. Uh, and I do. I'm kind of curious to see him make this sort of transition from, I don't know, space eater to a guy that can stay on the field a lot longer and maybe you know rely on. I don't. Ex can you say explosion when you're talking about a 330 pound guy? But he looks great, man. And he's just such a he's a lovable guy. What a, a lot. Of, all these guys are quite likable too, man. Not that that really matters, and not that we are not that we really know who these guys are. Uh, but man, just his his disposition is is a very comforting thing, even uh, through a computer screen. I agree. Gwinnett County in the house. That's right. Stand up, Gwinnett. Let's go. Seven seven zero six seven eight. But yeah, he, he the fact that he's still that big, and he's lost like fifty pounds. 
I mean, whole, and he even said, he's like, look, I, you know, I thought I could play at 383, 90. He goes, but I would play my freshman year. And after two or three plays, I'd be winded. And it's like, well, yeah, <laughs> that's what 400 pounds do, does to you, man. It's really hard to carry that. 330 isn't a piece of cake. But when you've been 390, he must feel like Usain Bolt. Right. He's like, what is this? How, now look how I can move. He's probably taking his shirt off all the time and looking at himself in the mirror. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I think that's uh, that's really encouraging. Um, you know, you assume he's kept his power. Um, but I think the bigger deal, I don't I don't know. You could look it up, Aslan. You look up everything. Like, I wonder what the most number of plays he played in the game last year or his freshman year were. It couldn't have been more than, like, 40, I wouldn't think. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure, Corey. All right, I got his uh, snap his snap chart or whatever from every single Wow, that was game. really quick. It's yeah. like you had it on hand. Yeah. Like, what do you think is the most he had last season? Or am I supposed to go back to 2018 as a freshman? Well, you could do both, but I, I would say last season. That's what I was saying. I would think it'd be like 42 or 40. Ooh, that's not I me. Mean, he had 62 against Boston College. He had 37 against Florida, 41 against Miami, 23 against Wake. But, uh, oh, I mean, otherwise, you know, he, he was kind of like in the 40s. By and large, so he played. So that makes sense against Boston College, obviously, because of the offense they run, and and they're not exactly a speeded up type offense. Um, but yeah, mainly he probably was on the field half the time, right? Maybe yeah. a little less, maybe a little more, like right there. Right. Um, you know, that's and and how many of those reps after the first twenty were worth a darn? That's true. Because he might have been exhausted. Because it's hard to carry that weight and attack and attack. Not that they were doing a ton of attacking last year. But now, um, that was another thing that, you know, Adam Fuller talked about, that these defensive tackles, they're not just there to catch blocks and eat space. He wants them, um, the main goal is to attack and make plays. And so if, if, if he's out there trying to attack and make plays, you got to be in better shape, man. You can't just sit there and say, all right, well, Lean I'm eating this somebody. block. Yeah. Yeah, I'm eating. I'm eating this block. I'm I'm taking up a gap. My work here is done. No, man, go make a play too, because um, he hasn't made a ton of plays. I'm not. He's been a good player, but he hasn't made a ton of plays in his first two years. And all good on him that he noticed that it was like I got to change something. And losing 50 pounds is a big old change. As a freshman, the most that he had in one game was Wake 36. Otherwise, he was either in single digits uh, or the teens. Uh, by and large, as a okay. freshman. So, all right. Uh, and to your point about him having to get in shape to be more of an attacking style player, uh, he, he sort of caught himself. He was about to, I, I think he was about to open up a little bit, but he caught himself. All these guys have done a really good job of catching themselves, which kind of stinks. Uh, but I think Ira was asking him about just the difference of, of, of sort of style, whether they're, they're more read and react or they're going back to that sort of attacking style they've been accustomed to. And it was something that, you know, you, you would bring up throughout the season when we had, Reference the conversation we had with former seminal great first round pick Travis Johnson, where he talked about, you know, you just don't go from a four three to like a bear front to a three four. Just play the same way. There's there's all sorts of different flavors and varieties of it, and they definitely weren't running uh, the the Baskin Robbins thirty two flavors or thirty one flavors. How many flavors are Baskin Robbins, Corey? Thirty eight. Thirty eight. There we go. Close. No, so, just kidding. It's you were you were right the first time. Thirty one. Okay. So he caught him. He was, he was like, yeah, we're going to attack. We're not doing uh, – yeah, we're, you know, he kind of like checked himself there. So, I mean, it does sound like probably uh, that's something that's going to suit his style. And I mean, you got Corey Durden. you got Marvin Wilson. You've got Robert Cooper. you got Fabian Lovett. Uh, True Thompson, I think, you know, plays his rear end off. It's like to make these guys like be read and react type sort of guys. I mean, that's not what you recruit them for. Uh, to, to, I guess it feels like all these guys are probably also playing something closer to what they came to Florida State to do as well, which has got to be a bonus. Well, yeah, man, it's more fun to play that way. It's just more fun to be on a good team. And it's more fun to be on a, uh, a team where you might necessarily trust your coaches a little more and think you're getting better coaching. The way that uh, – was it Amari Gaynor that talked about Marv? And look, Amari Gaynor wasn't really in the mood to do a lot of this, which is fine. That's his prerogative. Yeah. Um, he wasn't given a bunch of, uh, let's say, wordy answers um, out of choice. He's, he's a bright kid. But when he talked about Marv, he, he seemed to really open up a little more and seemed to really like that guy, the linebacker coach. The, the, the way they talk about Atkins, too. Um, this It's all just like – I just feel like these guys really, really trust and – well, trust this coaching staff and think that they know football um, and and are going to make them better. And that's such a big deal, man. So, again, 
Let's all hope we get to see it. Could we? I mean, we could spend a whole show like talking about, you know, we talk about depth charts, and you know, you you scout out a game, Florida Florida State versus Miami, and it's it's not Florida State's, you know, court. It's not James Blackman versus Derek King. It's it's this offensive line versus their defensive line. But man, if we just you just drew it up in the dirt, coach for coach, you know, Telly Lockett versus Chris Thompson, David Johnson versus Dante Pimpleton. Um, you know, Chris Marv versus Raymond Woody down the line. It's we couldn't we could do a 50 minute show and probably still need 30 minutes to really convey the upgrades that they've made on the on the on the coaching side of all this. And James Blackman's uncle and, you know, godfather pretty much said there's between this coaching staff and the previous coaching staff is the coaching, um, which is <laughs> right. you probably should put on a T-shirt, I would think. It's 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 crazy. I mean, it's 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 uh, it's crazy. We say that too much, but it really is. So, but again, the, again, that w- the word I keep using is encouraging because they weren't that far away last year from being a decent team. Um, they weren't. Their record was their record, but out of those seven losses, uh, what four of them were games they probably should have won. And you think uh, again, the wins above replacement with this coaching staff compared to the last one, you got to think it's like two point five. Um, and this team should be better than last year's team. I know they lost Cam Akers, but they have Tamari. They have their their second and third best players coming back. Um, uh, the quarterback play couldn't be much worse. Blackman could be better. The coaching is going to be better. The defense cannot be worse, and neither can the O line. So even with all those uh, you know blights last year, they still were pretty close to nine or ten wins. And maybe this co- this coaching staff can can milk that out of them. Not, maybe not nine wins because they're only, or ten wins because they're only playing eleven games, or maybe ten. Who knows? But however many games they play, um, they just should be they just should be better. I want to see it. Why? Well, I want to see it, Aslan. Don't you? Don't we all want to see this season? No, I'm the guy in the media that's rooting. Uh, I'm rooting. I've been rooting for the virus. I, I want. I want to lose my job. That's the thing um, I, they can get off Twitter for the rest of the time is yeah. people both sides. Like I'm tired of all these media members rooting for the uh, uh, for the virus, and it's like, well, they're not rooting for the virus, okay? So that's wrong. They weren't. They're not rooting for there not to be a college football season. But man, they're so quick to jump on a. There goes the season. I told you know what they're like. Uh, they're like the fan that you the friend that you have that's a fan that say you're a f- basketball fan. And the Lakers get down twelve to two in the first quarter. Ball game. That's over. They didn't come with it today. Right. right. Like, what's the point of that? Why are you saying that? There's a whole. That's not uh, the baseball team gets down three nothing in the third. That's a wrap. I told you this team sucks. Right. We all know friends that are fans like that. That are yeah. just half, not even half gla- glass, half empty. The glass is completely empty with them. Just nothing positive at all. And I just that's what's bothered me the most. I, I, I would not, the media isn't getting this thing canceled. I'm not, I'm not on that. And Hey, forget what I said at the beginning. I, it, it might not be canceled, but <laughs> he's it's not, back. If it, he's back. Corey's if, back on the train. Let's go. If it does get canceled, it's not because of the media. It's because there's 5.2 million cases in this country and 165,000 people have lost their lives and it's not anywhere near under control. That's why it's getting canceled. But the people that like, just were so itching to say, see, see, it, it, I just I didn't get that. It was almost like they had glee that look how da- oh you can't do it now dangerous and it happened with baseball. As soon as the Marlins got a few guys uh, positive, multiple people on my timeline shut it down. You got to shut it down. This is ridiculous. All right, man. Are you shutting down the pharmacy? Are you shutting down Chili's? Uh, you know you know you sh- you know I just I I don't understand the the that rush. Um, but at the same time, I certainly don't blame the media for. Uh, for this happening either. So I could be I could be on the fence, Aslan. I could be annoyed with some media members because of like the glee they seem to take in this happening. Not even glee, I don't know, just the I told you so aspect of it. I'm smarter than you and I want you to know it. And you guys are all dumb. How many people do you follow on, on Twitter, Corey? I don't know, 500, 400, something like that. I mean, I follow a couple guys that do a real good job of like aggregating and retweeting. Uh, I mean, I've seen like the Ross Dellinger and the Pat Forty. Like, I, I don't. I never. 
I've never sensed that from them. I mean, they're the ones that are kind of at the forefront of reporting all these things about Power Five commissioners saying, you know, this doesn't look likely, this looks likely, et cetera, et cetera. I've never. No, never there's seen. like three. There's three or four people I have in mind. I'm not going to name. Okay. There's all no right. point in it. Okay. There's three or four people I have in mind that the whole time, this whole time, um, it's just been. Uh, I, it's hard to even explain. See, so I, anyway. don't, I don't follow them. See, that's the thing. Like, you have to... Yeah, uh, you're smart. I shouldn't I, either. Isolate yourself from these sort of people. Uh, also, right. let's isolate our left tackle on an island. Sounds like we have an athlete. That was pretty cool to hear. Uh, not only uh, did uh, Mike Norvell point out the fact and, and use the word elite uh, when talking about the athletic ability, I guess, of, of Darius Washington, but also his coach, Alex Atkins, which uh, neither of those guys strike me as platitude givers. Like, these aren't guys that want to just say positive things for the sake of saying something positive, kind of like the way you all want me to be. You want me to say something positive just for the sake of saying something positive, but I'm not going to do that because that's not a good thing to do. Uh, that that was pretty uh, encouraging. That's the, that's the motto of the show, really. We're giving you a little bit of salt. We're giving you a little bit of sugar. This is encouraging. Your left tackle, uh, an adjective used to describe him is elite when uh, describing his athletic ability. I like that, Corey. Yeah, I don't think um, that was and- a Jawan Williams, uh, Abdul Bello calling card. Uh, Alex Atkins was uh, hesitant on on giving too many props because, well, we talked to him Saturday before they'd even gone into pads. And so he said about 12 times, look, it's really hard before they put any pads on. Yeah. Um, it's hard to make any judgments. But when he did talk about Darius Washington, he did say, um, the, you know, he said, look, he has a chance to be an elite athlete. The way he cuts, the way he moves, the way his feet get off the ground. Um, he, he did seem uh, very impressed uh, in the, not even just in the last two days, but like in workouts before before the uh, pandemic, just the way he moves, or maybe when they got back in June, just the way he moves um, as a big man, as a 300 pounder is something that you feel like he's he's saying to himself, me, yeah, I could work with that. Yeah. That's something I could really work with. So yeah, in, again, encouraging. And then uh, Darius, I think, pointed out, did he point out Dante Lucas or did Robert Cooper point out Dante Lucas? Cooper. Was he, yeah. Cooper. Yeah. Good for you. That was your question, wasn't it? It was, buddy. Yeah. Look at you. Man, War Chan out there. I'm going to, maybe I'll start doing, I'm going to do t- a working tally of who's asking these questions, these things. Uh, we were a man down. We've been a man down because I haven't been asking any questions, which is a good thing. Well, and I've been doing the, uh, the transcribing. Thing. So uh, I don't, I, and guys, I, you, if you're not a member of War Chan, again, it's, that's really dumb. And you're a smart person because you're listening to this show. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't add it doesn't. up while you're not a member. It doesn't. Um, but, you know, when they do these press conferences, I'm typing, I'm trying to type as much as I can from each interview. And it's usually about four a session. They do a morning inter- they do a morning session after the morning practice. We, I, I transcribe that, then I transcribe the afternoon. And, um, uh, so I'm not asking a ton of questions either, but I, you know, I want to show my face a little bit. So what I do, my trick Aslan, I'm sure you've noticed is when I'm transcribing, people can relate to this because we all do zoom calls. I don't want to be on camera all the time. I do a lot of things that I don't want people to see in the comfort of my own home. Okay. Am I right, Aslan? You feel me? Sure. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not about that. I don't want people to just see how I am in between interviews. Um, so I, 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 take, I turn my video off, but I turn it on because I want to have courtesy. I turn it on when I'm asking a question. Look at you. So they can see my face. They can see my head, the bald head, and know, oh, yeah, that's Corey Clark. And then as soon as uh, as soon as I'm done asking my question, I, I try to, I try to remember to turn it back off again because Ira told me uh, when was it after Friday? Oh no, it was Saturday before the first session on Saturday. He's like, "Look, man, try not to uh, pick up your remote and use it while we're in the middle of a Zoom call." <laughs> and I'm like, "Wait, what?" I go, "I'm at my kitchen table." He goes, "Yesterday you definitely picked up your remote and changed the channel." And I'm like, oh, that's my bad, man. I think I was turning it to golf. And, uh, you know, maybe I, I was done transcribing whoever was talking. So anyway, so I, I, I blacken the screen. I blacken the screen. But I'm going to try to start a- asking a few more questions as well. Uh, but I, you look, you're Ira's, working, asking, yeah. Ira's asking, asking four or five a pop. Ira's, yeah, Ira's putting in work. Also, Gene is as well. Gene has, uh, he has you know, no obligation to be doing this. Uh, he I think be on Gene's the- reinvigorated. He is. He is, man. He's, he's ready to go, man. He's ready to go. We're all ready to go. We're ready to, we're ready to watch some football. Ben, while we've been doing this show uh, on Sunday evening, Sunday night, uh, it seems like a uh, hashtag is starting to trend. Hashtag we want to play. Andrew Baselli, uh yep. has used it. Justin it's Fields. The thing, I think Trevor Lawrence was the guy yeah. Yeah. that really kind of started it. Yeah. So he's Spartacus. Uh, everybody. I mean. 
again, it's I'm not smart enough, although I pretend to be on this show, to know the answer. Um, I, 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 but it doesn't. What, what I just don't quite understand what's happened. No, the Big Ten doesn't play until late September. You, you've got 40 days. The, the ACC doesn't play for 33 days. Take your time. Don't make anything a rash decision. See what happens. See if you can come up with a plan that you, you feel okay about. Um, and, you know, listen to the players. Again, if, if I thought anybody was going to get somebody sick, of course. But I just, I don't see... Well, I, I don't understand any of the uh, what would happen if, if you cancel the season, but they stay on scholarship. Okay, but they're going to class. They're just not playing games. I, I wouldn't understand how any of that would work. I'd worry about some kids being like, you know what? I might just take it on down the road. You know, I've I, got I'm going like, to wait. Because there's no guarantee that the spring is going to be better. Heck, there's no guarantee that next fall will be better. Oh, so gosh, I, I worry about it, that. Man. Stop it now. Hey, I'm You're just saying. Killing it. Killing I know. The vibe. I'm sorry. I'm killing sorry. Vibe, I don't mean to kill man. the vibe. But I like, I love that that's happening. I don't know that it'll make a difference. But it's for a lot. It, it, everybody knows my feelings on uh, compensation for college athletes and how ridiculous it is how much money these these coaches make. But so often, all we hear about is the players that are getting exploited. And hey, buddy, I'm right there with you. But it is cool to see how the players have a movement like this about wanting to play the, the sport. I think that's really, really neat. I don't know if it's going to make a hill of beans difference, but I think it's really neat that they're doing this um, that I, maybe Trevor Lawrence started it, Justin Fields, uh, you know, you're talking probably the two highest profile players in the country have tweeted this out. Um, like you said, Florida state players are tweeting it out. It's starting to take hold hopefully. And maybe, maybe that will, uh, that will have some sort of impact. I don't know that it will, but golly, what did we do these last three months for then? Right. What did we do it for? What, what did, what did they come back in June for? If it's just going to be August 9th, August 10th. For no real reason, no real catalyst, that's ah, a wrap. So hopefully all the stuff that happened this weekend was just, uh, you know, noise. Cold and feet. It, cold feet before the big day. You know, now it's like, all right. Yeah, but it's, the big day is not for another, get cold feet September 5th or something. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, man, it's a, it's a, I don't envy anybody in these roles at all. This is a really hard decision. It's something that nobody's ever faced before, really. Um, and again, the difference between college athletics and the NBA, by the way, the NBA, God bless you. NHL, God bless you. MLB, no comment. MLS, way to go. PGA, let's give it up. Like there's sports again where they're showing it can be done. So that's awesome. Um, but obviously college football, college athletics is different for a, a variety of reasons. But here's hoping they can figure out a way to play. Absolutely. Um just a couple other people that were pointed out by the coaching staff and their fellow teammates. I think uh, was I don't know Mike Norvell or Chris Marv point out. Kalen Deloach was actually a guy they pointed out as saying has looked quite well out there. So uh, thank you Willie for that. And Carter Boatwright's another guy that the previous staff had recruiting. Carter Boatwright I think got uh, props from not James only Blackman brought yeah. him up. Like James Blackman was asked about. Every, I think he was asked about all the receivers. I, maybe he misunderstood the question and thought it was just about the freshmen. But I think he was asked about everyone, and the only name he brought up out of any pass catcher that he threw to uh, on Friday and Saturday was Carter Boatwright, right. the tight end, big old tight end. That's right. And Corey Wren, the speedster uh, out of uh, John Errett High School in the boot, Louisiana, uh, was asked if he was the fastest guy on the team, and I think he demurred, but uh, was asked who he thought might be uh, up there with them. Isaiah Bolin and Tamori and Terry. So pretty cool. Okay. You're 222 yeah. pounds, six foot four wide receiver. You've, you've put him on the, your all time Florida state draft list. He was on your board. You drafted him. You, you put a Jersey yeah. on him. Yep. Uh, I don't know if you look at his stats last year, they were fantastic. Yeah. And, they and were we, unbelievable. We, we talk about, you know, who's, who's the X factor. Who's the, who's the freshman that's going to break out and how many guys are going to get the ball in the backfield and all the different things they can do with uh, this package and that package and this player and that player, man, just, just throw it, throw it to five. I mean, like f everything has to go through him. Yeah. And uh, he said that they'd been moving him around a little bit when we talked to him on whenever that was, it's hard. They all run together, they folks, do. but we they did, really we did talk to him. Um, he said he didn't feel like he was any slower, even with about 
what would you say, 12 pounds of muscle that he's added? I mean, his frame looks different. Yeah. Uh, he's starting to look like Anquan. I mean, he is a big boy now. He is thick. On the um, spring, by the way, on the spring roster, he's listed at 6'4", 210. Okay, so 15 pounds of muscle maybe, 14 yeah. to 15? I think we said 220, 222, I think, right? Okay, all right, so, so there you 10 go. 10 to 12 pounds, 10 to 12 um, pounds, which is a significant yeah, man, amount. I mean, when you look at his numbers, if you go into his Seminoles.com bio, he's like got the most 70-yard touchdowns in school history. Um, he's got his average touchdown last year distance was like 50 yards per catch, touchdown catch, which was like the, the, the second highest in the last 20 years in college football history. Like, I know he plays on, he's played on bad teams, so it kind of gets lost. But what this dude has done with not good, a lot of greatness around him is really uh, almost incredible. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I mean, he could go down as one of the best that's ever done it. I, I would, I think he's the best deep threat Florida State's ever had, ever. There's there, like Kelvin Benjamin, you could throw deep balls to him and he'd go up and get them because he was a freakazoid when he was in shape. But as far as just blowing by defenders and running down the field and separating, you know, I don't, I don't even know who's in the conversation. I know Jesse Hester from the 80s and, and like Javon Walker. But they didn't have uh, – Javon Walker didn't have the career. Javon Walker had a nice last year, but he didn't have the two years that Terry's put together. I mean, no. a, and, uh, you know, Javon Walker had – well, for some of that he had – he had one Chris throw into him. And then he, his last year, he had another Chris throwing to him. So it was a little different. But, uh, yeah, man, Tamari Terry's an all-timer. And, again, that's another reason. You know what? We should start the hashtag. Uh, well, I don't know. I was going to say we should start a hashtag to coincide with we want to play. We Our cover. hashtag should be we want to watch. Oh. Well, yeah. But then it kind of – that's kind of dicey, right. isn't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> that could go in a lot of different ways. Maybe we want to cover – no, that's no that that could be yeah. We want to watch is the hashtag, but again, that could get us into some other themes. Well, that's what I'm saying. I thought maybe cover would get us out of that. Uh... Well, no, for the fans and media alike. Okay, well, all right. you know, it'd be for oh, all. Gotcha. We want to watch. All right, yeah. inclusive. Oh, I thought you were talking about us. Uh... No, no, no. The whole everybody, everybody listening to this that wants to watch college football, we want to watch. All right, um, that is a wrap for us. I don't know what we're gonna do the rest of the week. Maybe we'll do a live show on Monday since there's nothing going on. Uh, but I don't know because we really there's no days off. Like we're in the Belichick mode of this of this calendar, right? No days off. Well, that's right. That's right. May so maybe. Uh, well, yeah. Wouldn't we do one Tuesday then? A live show on Tuesday? Well, you know, I mean, we could. But you know, we'll actually have something to talk about on Tuesday because we'll have interviews. I mean, like, you know, we need we need something to fill the time on Monday. I mean, it's football season. We have to do shows every day. I feel like. Hey, well, by the way, we didn't uh, we didn't comment on the big story on Sunday, which again we can't start. We can't do this, Aslan. I know you're not a hoops guy necessarily, but it's a basketball school now. Oh, okay, you're right. You're right. You're right. And Proceed. Florida State Leonard Hamilton landed a five star point guard out of Pennsylvania named Jalen Worley, so that gives them four of the top. I think 55, 60 players in the country in this in the 2021 class. Is that good? Uh, it's the best class in the country. Yeah. Um, they've got three elite guards, like elite, like potential NBA guards coming in one class. Um, now, you know, they got to prove it. They're all high school kids. But to go along with the two shooting guards they'd already gotten, the two wings they'd already gotten, they get one of the best point guards in the country, uh, you know, like, a, like I said, a top 25 five-star guy. Um, one of the best classes that Leonard's put together on top of a class where he just signed like the number three player in the country and the number one or number two Juco player in the country. Uh, yeah, man, this is, uh, this is uh, high times for Florida State basketball. Just an incredible run. Uh, and it just keeps going. It, it won't stop. Can't stop. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Um... <laughs> If anybody's getting married and needs a videographer, reach out to me uh, in case, you know. What's I, that about? I don't know. I might need some supplemental income, Corey. You know, just kind of looking at Oh, it. there just you go. To... Hey, yeah, and if you want somebody to, like, do a podcast about your wedding. Yeah. Reach out I'll to do both that. of us. Reach out yeah, to we'll, both of us. We'll, yeah, we'll interview you afterwards or during. We don't care. And then we'll, uh, we'll you can have a podcast for, for, your, uh, for your wedding for all your friends. Again, uh, Florida State off on Monday. They'll be back practicing uh, Tuesday. We'll be back, I'm guessing, probably tomorrow. I think we're back to five days a week. Uh, maybe we'll have a guest. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll have Ira. Maybe we won't. But 
We're going to be here like a hey, beacon stick of with light. Me, folks. Stick with me, folks. I'm going to come, I'm gonna come, come out of it. As long as nothing's canceled by a Monday, today, if we get through today with no bad things happening, I'm back on board the train. It's going to be nothing but fun, love, and Corey. All systems go. College football is coming. Finally, an answer to the age-old question, which comes first, the chicken or the egg roll? Easy. Just eat whichever one's closest. The Sensation Salad and Filet Sandwich Meal are back at Zaxby's. Both feature our famous hand-breaded chicken, crispy wontons, Asian slaw, and citrus vinaigrette. And each comes with its very own egg roll. For a limited time, only at Zaxby's. Try them with fried pickles while supplies last.